Well, reacting to the judgment, uh, former president and 2020 NDC presidential candidate John Dramani Mahama criticized EC chairperson Jean Mensah for refusing to testify. But no one who followed the proceedings of the Supreme Court will be surprised with the judgments pronounced a few hours ago. Much as I'm aware that we are legally bound by the decision of the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court of Ghana, I disagree with the process of the trial and the ruling of the court. Ghanaians were hoping to hear her testify, and many are still baffled by the refusal of Mrs. Jean Mensa to be held to account by testifying in this case. Unfortunately, with the unanimous agreement of the justices of the Supreme Court. The vital part of the process to establish the truth and hold Mrs. Mensah accountable was blocked time and again by a protective cordon and firewall that I'm sure has confounded many Ghanaians. The refusal of this chairperson is in sharp contrast to the readiness with which Dr. Kwejua Farijan, then chairman of the Electoral Commission, willingly testified in the 2013 election petition filed by then candidate Nana Akufuadu of the MPP. Speaking as a Ghanaian with no legal training, I believe that the refusal of the Electoral Commission chairperson to testify in this election petition leaves a very bad precedent for the future. Well, Mr. Mahama also said the deliberate exclusion of Sal uh, constituents from the parliamentary election constitutes gerrymandering and the gravest abuse of power which influenced the outcome of the elections. My brothers and sisters, we cannot forget the burning issue of the deliberate exclusion of the good people of Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, and Lolobi Sal from the parliamentary elections of 2020. This constitutes perhaps the gravest injustice of the 2020 elections, perhaps even greater than the election petition. It can easily fit into the worst forms of electoral trickery ever witnessed in our nation's history. Despite the shenanigans employed by the conspirators in this issue, it is abundantly clear that the rights of the people of South to vote was intentionally violated as part of a move to ensure the predetermined election outcome of a particular com uh, parliamentary constituency. This represents unparalleled abuse of power by both the government and its handmaid in the Electoral Commission to influence the outcome of the parliamentary election in that constituency. It is even more staggering that no one has stepped forward to take responsibility for this unjustifiable action nor indicated any clear remedy for the harm that has been caused the good people of Sao. We cannot as a people countenance this kind of gerrymandering and chicanery in our politics. We must with one accord demand immediate resolution of the impasse in the Sao area and take urgent steps to afford the people their right to vote and be represented in Ghana's parliament. Indeed, this commission has absolutely no reason to re continue to remain in office. This is because the Electoral Commission must remain a neutral arbiter and organize, organizer of elections. The Electoral Commission must not have a vested interest in the dubious victory of one party over another.